Yo, what's going on guys? Jared here. Today I want to talk about another tier 1 deck that is going to be for the upcoming meta. Um, and this is going to be the fire episode, I would say. Um, this is going to be all the fire decks in one. I don't have deck lists for all the fire decks. I'm just going to be showing off the uh, fire king snake eye deck. So um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about it. What makes this deck so strong? What you need to be look at, looking out for? Um, yeah, this deck is crazy how much it can do, how much versatility it has, how much it can play through. It's ridiculous and how much non-engine you can also fit in this deck so um if you enjoy this video if you enjoyed the discussion let me know what you think down below and please subscribe and uh until that let's just jump right into it so i wanted to start off this video by preferencing uh tommy rose video on this deck he did a whole complete tutorial combo for the fire king and the snake eyes deck which helped me a lot understanding it so um shout out to tommy if you want to learn this deck and how to play it and the interactions and a lot of uh there's a lot of test hands in here um, go check this video out. I'm not going to show the combos and stuff because I don't want to take away from this video. Um, so go check it out if you want to learn this deck, the tier one deck, the meta. This is definitely the video you want to look at. So um, shout out to you for showing that. And uh, yeah, but this is still going to be the uh, deck list that we're going to use here. I have it pulled aside and I have some other stuff here too. But the main preference of what I think is going to be the best fire deck uh, moving forward is going to be the Fire King Snake Eye uh, deck. This deck is crazy. The one card combos that it has, the amount of utility that Populous adds to the deck coming out with the next set is crazy. And then plus we're getting Bonfire for such a consistency boost for strategies like this is, I can't, I, like seeing this deck play is insane. Um, the fact that Flame Bird's Dragon now finally has a home that can fit in and you get to see it be abused in the way that like, it's one of those cards that you read on release and you're like, oh, this is really good, as long as the other Snake Eyes cards are really good. And the original three Snake Eye monsters that we got weren't like all of that. Now, with the release of Populous, with uh, with uh, Ash and the Populous, it's like, it's too good now. Now it's like, this card finally has the right home that it needed to push through. Um, and on top of that, in the next set also, is we get Promethean Princess... Um, bestower of flames this again as an interruption as a link climb this card is ridiculous and the hard counter it is very difficult you need something like soul release to hit this along with the other fire king things and snake eye things in the graveyard so you really need like multi like to be able to play through a board i really think it's going to be extremely difficult um soul release is going to help i don't know if it's the exact correct decision yet but um i think the best way right now is just from stopping them from playing in the first place but this deck is going to be able to adapt well in the playing through hand traps at the same time. So it's going to be extremely difficult to figure out which way, if it's going to be stopping them from making the board or breaking the board. Um, and this card makes it so much harder because I say this all the time. Any deck that has interruptions that are in multiple places, whether it be the hand, field zone, or graveyard, along with the field, it's hard to interact with all of that. So they, you still have to play through something no matter which one you deal with. So that's why I think it's easier to stop them from making it rather than trying to push through it because it's just too much in too many different places and the recovery of this deck also it's not like it does a combo and it's like oh it doesn't have like follow-up oh you're like this deck's gonna otk you on the clap back too um like pretty easily as well so um this it has it's just too much utility so i think this is going to be the best fire deck this one like specifically again i'm going to use this as the baseline template i think this is a good baseline template after looking around at other lists too um i can tell a lot of effort put into it was put into this there's another list that he posted too with more non-engine slots as well which is one of the fire king um only two garunix but again and uh, i think there was only one original sinful so spoils but um, again, those are just more slots for non-engine if you wanted to play them, which again, this deck already is playing nine, so you can bump it up to 12 as well. Um, really crazy being able to take advantage of the Dia Bellstar package as well. Wanted is in such, it, this package is already insane. And then you put it with the other part of the archetype that goes along with it. It's even better now because um, you get easier access to it with Populous. And then at the same time, just being able to use these cards with so many different archetypes as well, right? That's why I have this separated down here um, by this normal monsters. Like, this is going to be the year of fire. Like, this this national season is going to be the fire season. So I think a lot of things are going to fall out of favor. Um, things such as bestials are going to be either moved to the side deck or removed completely because I really think that fire decks are going to just push through everything, even against Labyrinth. Like, yeah, bestials are, like, good, but you would rather have things like Bell and Ash in there in the first place, and those cards also affect the Fire King deck too. So I, I really don't know if there's going to be a line or a reason to play the Bistules in that um, in that type of meta. 
Also, these decks, these cards are really good in the sub strategies that we already have. Um, even just this past YCS with the Runic deck winning, Fire King plays through Runic cards extremely well. Like, like popping these things does not do a lot. Um, we don't have a banish effect out of the graveyard to clear it. They can pop stuff constantly with the uh, Kirin every single turn, having a negate for the Hugin. Like, they have a lot going on here. So, Runic might even struggle with this too. So, I, I, I don't think this might push that out of the meta at the same time. But the only good thing is that from the previous thing we talked about, Runic has a good matchup against Labyrinth. So it's going to be, you know, give and take. Maybe there'll be some type of uh, triangle meta going on there, but we'll see. I don't know if Labyrinth's favorable into the Fire King deck. I don't think it might be, but we'll see. And then, you know, only time will tell depending on how the meta develops. But it would be criminal of me to not discuss the other um, archetypes that can also abuse these fire cards, right? Uh, things like Rescue Ace, Infernoble. Um, Infernoid, once they get their new support, is going to be a menace, so keep that in mind too. Infernoid is also really good at countering the Fire King strategy itself because, you know, every Infernoid monster is a DD Crow, and DD Crow is going to be seeing a lot more play now. So um, I think something like Infernoid, once they get the support, can be a um, an absolute like force to be reckoned with once we get those cards. Um, even this uh, Evil Tile being um, a combo starter for the deck. I'm not saying Evil Tile is like meta or anything, but these are all just decks that can abuse the fire support that we have now and are going to be able to as long as things like Diabelle and Wanted and Original Sinful Spoils and Promethean Princess are all here. Um, oh, I should have put Salamangrate on here too. Uh, Salamangrate can also use these cards. But the fact that they are able to use them is absolutely bonkers and is really something that you need to look out for something that you need to either play or know how to play against right so this is the time where you need to be testing these cards um learning how they operate i think is a big portion of it because the best way to know how to beat something is know how to use that thing so um a good example of this would be from tier format if you uh understood how tier worked if you were playing it it really really helped knowing um, you could predict what would be in your opponent's hand from how they're do like doing their chains from how they're milling, how they're doing their order of operations from out of their hand. So stuff like that. This is the, this is the same thing. Like depending on what they do, you might be able to get some value out of this. But again, things like Drone Lockbird and DB Crow are going to be extremely important going into a deck like this. And I I cannot preface this enough. This deck is going to be extremely strong. Um, it's going to be very hard to counter. And uh, depending on where the meta goes, I this might this is probably going to be my tier one pick for the going into the upcoming meta because this deck is bonkers after seeing it played so many times and how much it can play through, and like how easily it can just pump out like three in a row. Like it's it, it is astonishing to me how easy it is to go into IP into SP into Promethean Princess. Like those three in a line is just ridiculous how often it can do it. So. Um, that's going to be it for this video. I just wanted to preface and shine light on something like this that you need to look out for. Please learn how to play this. If you plan on playing even semi-competitively, because I don't want these cards to come out and then people complaining about them that they don't, that they can't stop them or figure it out. Figure it out now. This is the time to do it. You need to be ahead of the curve, not behind the curve, and then just be complaining about them when they come out. There is going to be counters for this. I, there will always be a counter for some kind of strategy. Um, we, we just don't know exactly what it's going to be yet, but think we have good like insight that's going to be things like Crow, Soul Release, Droll and Lockbird, even Droll they can play through sometimes, so keep that in mind depending on what their hand is, but it still affects the deck in some kind of way. Um, yeah, so please be ahead of the curve, um, put the effort in to learn it, um, to at least understand fundamentally how it works to some kind of degree, and keep an eye out, because I think this is going to be another deck that is going to push... Um, the power creep up a little bit from where we are now. So that's going to be it for today's video. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. Please check out Tommy's video if you want to learn. This is such a good stepping stone for learning the deck and to keep ahead of the meta. And uh, yeah, so again, please subscribe if you enjoyed the discussion. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.